Well, thank you, Lisa, for that kind introduction, and, and thank you to SOCAP and the team for the invitation to speak with you tonight. And it's truly an honor to share the stage with colleagues Judith Roden, uh, Catherine Fulton, Matt Bannock, and Anthony Bug Levine. You know, and getting to hear from the entrepreneurs with us today brings this work to life and I think inspires all of us greatly uh, as we, we get a chance to hear their stories and the great work that they're doing. Now, most of you know me as the CEO of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. But as Lisa indicated, what you might not know is that I have a second role, which is the co-founder with my wife, Tricia, of the Rakes Foundation. The Rakes Foundation is a private family foundation focused in on helping young people reach their full potential, in particular through identifying the issues of transition and early adolescence and instilling student agency, the academic mindsets and learning strategies to complement cognitive performance. And at first glance, our work at the Rakes Foundation and my work at the Gates Foundation may appear to be dra dramatically different in both size and scope. The Gates Foundation is roughly 1,100 employees and have offices in, in London, Beijing, Delhi, Washington, D.C., as well as our headquarters in Seattle. The Rakes Foundation, on the other hand, has four employees. We sublet office space from uh, our attorney's office in downtown Seattle. The Gates Foundation is involved in more than 25 different initiatives from agriculture to vaccine to education, our work takes us around the globe. At the Rakes Foundation, most of our work focuses in on improving the lives of youth uh, in the Pacific Northwest with aspirations to take that national. But as different as these organizations are, we share one thing in common, at least one thing. We're both learning organizations with a hunger for information and knowledge. Now, most nights I'll sit down with Trisha for dinner and share stories about what I've learned at the Gates Foundation. And Trisha, who's overseeing the day-to-day -day operations at the Rakes Foundation, will share her own stories about working with, with grantees or the latest research on, on youth and, and early adolescence and student agency. And together, we discuss how what we are doing and learning might benefit the other organization and ultimately improve our impact. Now, when I take a step back and I think about these conversations, I'm struck by two things. First, I'm reminded how important these exchanges are for philanthropy. And second, I realize that these conversations don't happen often enough or on the scale that they should. The social sector is huge. In the US alone, we have one million public charities trying to make the world a better place. Our sector, this community, all of us should be thinking hard about how we can share what we are doing and learning. Working together, we have an incredible opportunity to ensure we improve our work and achieve the impact that we all desire. Now, one of the ways we can collaborate better is to effectively share our data. There are too many questions we just can't easily answer, but not because the answers don't exist. It's because it's just too hard, there's too much friction in getting to the information. Questions like, what are the results that we are achieving with our programs and how do we improve them? What are the programs that achieve the most success? And what happens when we scale or undertake them in new communities? What are the experiences of those receiving services or products, and what ideas do they have for improving their lives? Where can you find out about available resources? And I know those of you in this room looking for money know how much time you spend trying to answer this question. If we want to achieve bigger impact faster, we need to develop ways to share and organize information and knowledge that will provide the answers to these questions. With better data, nonprofits will get better feedback from the people they're trying to help. Funders will make better decisions based on more reliable evidence of social return. And social entrepreneurs will gain investment insights that can help maximize the impact. And that's why I'm thrilled to have this opportunity tonight with you at SOCAP. I think of it as a 
much larger dinner table to discuss our work on philanthropy and social investing and to learn from one another. Whether our capital is philanthropic or intended for impact investment, whether our return is purely social or blended, we have at least one common need. Our work relies on the free flow of quality, accessible data and information. Data and information that will lead to great impact and a better world. So this evening, I'm pleased to announce the launch of a new effort we're supporting in partnership with the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation and the financial firm LiquidNet in achieving this goal, Markets for Good. Now, Markets for Good is an effort to improve the quality, quantity, and flow of data and information in the social sector in order to create more social good. So what's our vision? Imagine a social sector where information flows enabling all participants, donors, nonprofits, beneficiaries, to make better decisions, to take better actions, and to achieve better results. Imagine a poor family in San Francisco who needs affordable health care, but experiences long wait times at the local nonprofit health clinic. Imagine that family being able to voice its opinion about the problems at the clinic. Imagine that nonprofit health clinic respond, responding to that feedback by investigating ways to reduce wait times by similar clinics in Los Angeles and Atlanta. And imagine that as a result, the clinic reduces its wait times and increases the number of patients it can see by 25%. Imagine a donor learning that the health clinic he supports has improved dramatically the number of patients it's able to serve. And because of this impact, he or she decides to double his donation next year. Imagine this health clinic sharing its experience with other health clinics across the country. So more people in need of affordable health care can receive it. Imagine the impact if we can make this vision a reality. And how will we get there? Well, the path starts with all of you. The technology exists today to collect this kind of data and turn it into actionable knowledge. Mobile, big data, open data. These advancements are changing other industries at a phenomenal pace. And yet, even if we build the best system in the world, it will only be successful if it's valued and used. And that takes capacity, know-how, in changing the way we as individuals and organizations work today. We know that we cannot drive this change alone. And we cannot drive it from the top down. Our goal is to expand and amplify a conversation. At marketsforgood.org, we are hosting a dialogue to explore these issues. Learn what the barriers are. Find out your ideas for getting better, more reliable, and more consistent data. We are building on many great existing efforts, like the Rockefeller Foundation's support of GIN and IRIS and the Omidyar Network's early support of similar conversations. There are many concrete projects underway, and our goal is to help connect and accelerate them, to catalyze new work, and to identify gaps and close them. And so we're going to invite you to join us next door in the hub for drinks, food, and music. And there are computers where you can check out Markets for Good, see the site, and join our online conversation. Also, if you would like to learn more about this initiative and participate in a real-life conversation, we're holding a workshop tomorrow at 12.15 with the Hewlett Foundation and LiquidNet. And as I look out over this audience tonight, I am more optimistic than ever about the energy, the passion, and the commitment to change philanthropy in the world for the better. Working together, I know we can build a better tomorrow starting today. So thank you for being a part of this dialogue.